<laughs> Welcome back to the, the the podcast. Don't listen to the podcast, the radio, the show, the soundtrack. I didn't sleep last night. Obviously, you. since you're very enthusiastic and excited and energized and, and ready cold. to share. <laughs> yes. Um, so this is officially the fourth episode of our podcast. Uh, and since we already did one episode uh, in January, we decided to dedicate the second episode in January to... To fre- February... Fre- to the second month. No. It was supposed to be funny, but I, I can't say February. Uh, and we're basically covering albums that we enjoyed this month, or that, that have come out this month specifically. Um, just new artists perhaps or old artists that we already listened to that just released new things uh, and also I prepared one single that I would like to share simply because it's definitely worth mentioning but I'll leave it for the end okay then so. I have no singles <laughs> because uh, I, I have a theory and uh, I'm about to prove it uh, metalheads and other extreme genre listening people are hibernating mm. so there's been like five total albums released in January and the end of the year was, was great lit yeah there was like dozens of albums coming out like every week or so and there was a lot of good things and then the new year happened and this is like uh, everyone just sleeps now well, they're recovering from celebrating Ooh, New Year's. Much, so. Yeah, so I got, I found some some new artists, some old ones, some something interesting. So I don't know. You wanna go first? Or do I go first? You, you should uh, go first. Sure, because I came prepared, unlike someone. <laughs> okay. Uh, so That's all of the artists, so <laughs> all of the artists that I have prepared. Uh, are completely new to me. This was the first time I heard of them. I heard any of them. Because no one, no one Uh, put anything else out in in January. um, Yes and no. There were a couple K-pop artists that were really active this month, but I wasn't really feeling those albums um, as much as I did with these new artists. So the first artist I want to present is called Easy Life and they released an album called Junk Food. Uh, I never heard of Easy Life before. It's some indie or is it pop punk? It's... Emo, Midwest Emo. Alternative, they're described yeah, as alternative. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's indie. Um, in a way, yeah, but they don't have the stereotypic indie sound. They I mean, what's actually the name, what's the name of, the, of the band? Easy yeah. Life. Easy Life. That, 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 that's such an indie. Uh, well, it's an all guys band. They formed uh, three years ago now. Okay. They're from, what's the name again? Well, they're just English. I forgot. Leicester, I think. Leicester? However. Leicester? Uh, no, an L. Leicester. I have no idea how, um, how the English language works, thank you. And they... It, the band basically consists of these five dudes that each of them have like their own role, of course, like the vocalist, the drummer, the it's, pianist, etc. Like very normal. Um, and this album features seven songs. Okay. And they basically signed uh, with the Record House Island Records. They're usually signed alternative, more indie, groups when they eventually okay. decide to sign to a record label and when I first listened to it I was so confused because the vocalist has a very similar um, voice to Rex Orange County but the music was like something Brock Hampton or Tyler the Creator would make with like, Isn't that just like Rex Orange County? No, there's like a difference. I mean, yeah, it's similar, but uh, for me personally, the difference is that I always felt that Tyler and Brockhampton always put in more of like that R&B hip hop vibe, while Rex stayed more like poppy in the alternative. So you basically get this alternative vocal with a hip hop-ish urban sounding um, melody in the background. (coughs) I'm dying. And 
Yes, also Kelly Uches, she, I mean, she is the, basically the, 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 the same She, she did that one song with Tyler, Tyler. Yeah. that's See all I again. know. And, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's not similar lyric-wise, I would say. Wait, well, what, what did she do? She does similar music, like oh, 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 Tyler, yeah. they kind yeah. of in the same vibe, but yeah. she has a very specific way of singing, because she likes to incorporate some Latino style. Uh, in her music because she's Latino and I could also feel that in Easy Life and this album Junk Food okay. uh, This is their third album that they have released so far I have yet to listen to the other two if, to see if there is like a major difference in the genres if it's like an experimental type of band or not but the reason I chose them is because they have such amazing word choice when uh, singing because, for example, one of their most praised songs off of this album is called Earth, and it actually talks about the climate change, how we as people are affecting the earth, and there's how even a dare line. <laughs> there's even a line that goes something like, and I will not quote it, I'll just paraphrase it, like, uh, I've lost my you only went, home, you took my, like, uh, my planet doesn't feel like home anymore. We're using up all of our resources for nothing. I mean, and cattle, cattle decapitation did that like. 10 years ago. I don't listen to that music so I can't say that it, it, it's called It's called vegan music. Um, they're not vegan. Oh. This is just like one song. Oh. <laughs> um, there's a song called Sangria as well, which I, I like really that. like. Which is basically like just about, you know, partying, having fun in your life while you're young and it's very typical. Um, but other songs are also like very chill, like you can they're very easy to listen to, you don't need to like, focus that much on the lyrics, they're very smooth with the melody, so I wouldn't say they're quite catchy as most pop songs, um, because well, they don't it's, have it's, a lot of, indie. yeah, but they don't have like a lot of repetitive choruses so that it gets stuck in your head, um, but you can definitely remember them uh, by the melodies that they use, since every song has a very distinct melody. Now that now that you have said that, repeating stuff, uh, the, the comedian dude, Bo well, Burnham, yeah, his song repeat, repeat stuff. stuff. It, it, it's gonna be stuck in my head now. Yeah, um, and I don't know. I think if you're looking for something along the lines like Tyler, Brockhampton, Rex Orange County, uh, because I was always on the lookout for similar artists with similar sounds. Okay. Um, Easy Life is. A quite high recommendation if you ask me. I have something for you then. What? Uh, remember the first time, th this is for the OG fans. OG, know, from like the fourth episode. Yeah, from like two months ago, when I told you I had that... Uh, sure, sure. No, 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 the, the site that I used, it's called Taste, Taste, Taste something. Yeah. I remember that and I found it the other way so I can send it to you, where you enter the artist's name or an actor a TV show and based on uh, people's likings it gives you similar artists yeah mm. I'm gonna send you that you, you, you could perhaps use something sure and we'll try to put like a picture or a link somewhere to, here to, editor to please yes put it there um, and that's kind of how I would like to start the year. Yes, and wrap up my first album. Okay. Also, uh, their cover art is always pretty cool. I looked at it and they're all very like vintage, well not vintage, more retro looking with like the green and in this one they were dressed as like McDonald's workers or like some sort of it's, fast food chain It's an indie band, alright. Uh, yeah, it looked like junk food because the album name is junk food. So okay, so cool. for my for the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. the first thing I found uh, I have no idea how the guys look. They're very <laughs> underground. This is, I think, the first thing they ever put out. Uh, it's an American band, mm -hmm. that's all I can tell you. Uh, Rotten Monarch. And guess what they play? Death Metal. Uh, close. Black Metal. Yeah, it, it, it's a <laughs> bit of both and a bit of like noisy, harsh noise, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's very, very noisy at times, you know. For example, like the beginning of the album, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I found it on, I don't know if it was YouTube or something. 
and th th there was no genre description. So I was like, if this is some post-black metal, post-rock hybrid that everyone is trying to do nowadays, and it's, it's just, it's not even boring, it's, it's not... Just failing? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like failing at everything. I, I, was, I was expecting that, to be honest. But when I heard the first song started, and it was black, black metal with death metal vocals, which is usually classified as black and death, mm -hmm. but uh, there was a lot of distortion, even black on the... Black and death, death. Yeah, black and death metal. Black and or black and? Black and. Like one word? Yeah. Okay. And I got confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they added a lot of distortion to all that distortion, and it made it sound very distorted and of course <laughs> yeah but but it, it's a, it's a, it wasn't a anything like super new or innovative or special it was just a, a, a warm album to, to, to keep you warm during the, the cold um, months what, what of January do they usually sing about uh, uh, probably uh, satan and oh, death okay <laughs> I, I haven't found the lyrics yet Oh. I, I have found, I have understood some of them, and there, there's actually a lot of, uh, like, you know, the, the grand theme of human suffering that a lot of bands do, but none of them do it well. I mean, my, my next artist is, is gonna be a bit different, I promise, you're, you're not expecting it, but this one is just like, you know, the, the uh, standard uh, Kiemos pick to keep you warm during the winter, Rotten Monarch. Uh, and the album is called uh, Winds or Ash. It's, it's a nice thing to listen to. I have to like, a question. Like uh, every time I talk, you you look like you have like <laughs> ten questions at any given moment. Um. So basically, when someone listens to metal music, let's say specifically black or death metal okay. for a long time, do they eventually like get this talent to understand, to understand the lyrics? Like without looking at the lyrics first. Well, yes, but actually no. It depends. Like, um, for example, with growling, um, when I just started listening to that music, like way way back in, in middle school, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't understand what even Bullet for My Valentine was singing. And over the time, I started to mm -hmm. understand it, actually. There were some, of course, mistakes, but you get a yeah. lot of it. Then, when I started listening to uh, Death Metal, but there was stuff like old Cannibal Corpse, like when, when they put out the Tomb of the Mutilated and the early 90s era. Like, that's, that's really... If you understand two words in there, you're good. But listening to that, and then like going back just a bit to like Suicide Silence or some Deathcore band, like you can understand everything, mm -hmm. and it's it, it really, at least to me, like after all the years and years and years, like I can understand most of the deathcore songs. With when it comes to growling, when it comes to um, more brutal genres, mm -hmm. there's different techniques. There's uh, guttural, gu guttural growls. They go like super low, super Are deep. Are they like from supposed to be from the gut? No, or? not really. There's like they're growls, but you close your mouth as much as possible and it, it, it sounds like uh, like I don't know how to explain it like when you when you, when you poop. no 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 when you, <laughs> um, when there's water in the sink you know yeah and you close the sink and wait for it all to go oh, and then that sound yeah. and the gurgly sound yeah. and that that's how it sounds okay. so like they can barely they can pronounce words but it's very very hard to understand mm. them. On the other hand, when it comes to when it comes to screaming, uh, I'd say it's more about how distorted the scream is. Mm. Uh, there's some techniques where you can like do mid screams and high screams, and everyone can understand you. And there's some like shrieking techniques, mm. especially in black metal, when not really it's not not that easy to understand. And then there's of course when you add distortion and effects, it's it's more uh, atmospheric. Mm. And that not uh, not meant to be taken uh, lyrically. Uh, for example, there's bands in uh, slam, slam, slamming brutal death metal, slam for short. And there's a lot of bands there that just use vocals as an instrument. Without lyrics. They don't have lyrics. Mm, okay. They they don't you, you they they just do the, the big squeals, the guttural, the growls, essentially using the voice as an additional instrument. So like, is a good 
death metal singer, let's say, or black okay. metal singer, the one that can do a high quality growl or scream, okay. or the one that does a growl or scream, but you can understand what they're saying, that they're like articulate. Well, I don't think it. it depends on him. If he wants to be understood and he can be understood, if that's what, what works for the band, then yeah, it's a good vocalist. On the other hand, if he wants to be if he wants to try some technique that's hard to understand and still people like understand it or it's you know not not distorted enough or whatever, then it may come across as poorly done or mm -hmm. something. Uh, it depends on the band. Oh, so uh, there isn't like, oh, he's a bad singer because I don't because care if he can do a good growl, but I can't understand what he's saying. Like there's. Not really. Well, no, much of not, that. not really. The, the, I mean, if you want to understand death metal, you listen to like well, not not really old school. You just listen to pure death metal, melodic death metal. It's very understandable. Like for example, uh, Children of Bottom, the band. I used to listen to them. Bottom. No, of Bottom. Bottom is a lake in Finland. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about that. Anyway, uh, they somewhat growl, sing mostly, and. Uh, uh, I'm on Amars, the oh, Viking yeah, band, you know, like they growl, but you can understand every word. Mm -hmm. So it's all like kind of yeah. And if you want to understand it, you're gonna listen to that. If you don't, you're gonna listen to what, what I listen. To. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to your. Mm -hmm. Okay, I always wanted to ask that, but I always forget. So I'm glad I remember Here we now. Go. Okay. Next. Um, I don't know where to start with this artist because I was so confused when I first Again. Listened. I'm always confused when I uh, find out about a new artist. So the album is called RYC, okay. like an acronym. It stands for Raw Youth Collage and it is by That's Yura very, very Massa. Pop Massa? punk indie sounding. I'm not sure how to pronounce this artist's name, but the real name is Alex. Croson? Croson? Let's just call him Alex. Alex. Um, but he picked his um, name Muramasa uh, after Muramasa Sengo, um, who was um, a swordsmith in Japan. Okay. Um, but does Alex actually make swords? No. I guess he perhaps just likes swords. Making yes. swords. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure why. Um, he's from Guernsey? That's somewhere in Great Britain. I have no idea where this is. I was okay. so confused. I was trying to find it on the map and I got so confused because it, it lives... A, no, it's like a separate island. Might be the Canary Islands. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sorry for the people who I, live in I Guernsey. I mean, we live in Bosnia. Like, True, how how many people Bosnia. know where Bosnia is? Um, so this album has 11 songs. Okay. And I was quite surprised to find out that he's only like two years older than us because he has already accomplished a lot in the music world. Let's start a band in time. <laughs> um, he well, his main label is an electric, electrical, electronic, electronic music okay. producer. Okay. Um, and he actually won a Grammy, uh, and for being. Like a self-produced track, I think. Okay. Um, and he was also nominated for Best Dance Slash Electronic Album and Best Recording Package. Okay. Although I'm not sure what this this second uh, award really stands for. Um, I was it was so weird because it does have that electronic sound that you would expect, but it's not okay. that. What, what what genre is it? It's like electronic music, but like mixed with alternative and pop at the same time. So it's somehow. pop music. Kind of. Well, the lyrics would mostly make you make you think that it's like a pop song. So it's pop music. I guess, but it has electronic sound. Well, name one pop song that doesn't have an electronic sound. <laughs> oh no, I don't sound. mean like that. Like, you can see that he. Yeah, no, I know. It's it's more electronic than pop. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he did also a lot of collaboration with different artists, which are mostly underground artists, like in alternative indie underground artists, and. Um, I found out about him because of Claro, she's one of the indie artists that I really love um, and she did a song with him which I really enjoyed and uh, I don't, mm, 
Hmm. It's weird to describe his sound because you have that electronic music in the background with almost like you almost get like a magical or fantasy feeling atmosphere okay. with it. But then you you do have the soft vocals of, for example, Claro and her very soft female vocal singing. But then you have his, which at the same time sounds like a robot, but it sounds human at the same time. But it's not auto tuned, so I'm really confused at what's going on there. I might have to just look at his process and how he actually makes his music. Um, how do you achieve that sound? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but they're all very mellow, very slow paced. I didn't really find any of the songs that upbeat. So it's sad boy would... hours music. A bit, yeah. Okay. Um, he actually said that one of his biggest inspirations was like Gorillaz and The Smiths. And those two bands made him learn a lot of instruments, which he incorporates in his music. And he even got an award for Best Life Performance where he uh, performed Blue together with Damon. Alburn. Uh, what song? Blue. B L U. I, Just B L U. Oh, I got it. Um, Is that his song? I don't think so. I think the, it's the only. Really no, I, the first thing popped in my head was "I'm Blue" by no, 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 not that. Not that. Um, but he did get an award for that as well. I think that was in 2018. Okay. I might be wrong though. So let. No, what that was on last year. No, it was two years ago. No? Um, I'm thinking what else I could say. I don't know, it's so, um, I told you I forgot the name of one song, but I know it's the second uh, track on the okay. album. And it's, uh, they, it has the stamp like explicit mm -hmm. on Spotify, which basically means it either has like a lot of curse words or it's talking about quite controversial topics. It doesn't have any curse words. Uh, but it does talk about like the uh, gun laws in America and how some states don't really do anything about them or make them more concrete or just you know make them a specific law or have better regulations I mean, about it. And just the, like the youth also violating those laws. You have the Second Amendment. Let's not talk about this. No, I'm just saying like what he sings about in okay. the song and just also like just the American youth and how they handle all of it and how some okay. of them abuse that as well. Um, just like your stereotypical American this youngster, is let's say. Type song. Yeah, but it's really, really attacking the government for not being that For not organized. giving them the guns? No, just like not, not being organized in general, like a being a mess of a government, let's say. Uh, dude, come to Bosnia. We, um, we don't have a government. Well, <laughs> um, I think that's it. Do you have questions? Questions? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what genre is he? What's he doing? Well, he did okay, get. So, okay, so he uh, was nominated for best dance slash electronic. Okay, album. this is how I understood it. He's a robot sounding man who sounds like a man yes. while sounding like a robot. Yes. Who does dance electronic music? Yes. With a pop vibe. About gun laws in America. <laughs> Not just that. <laughs> That's some next level. Stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't know how uh, else to explain it. I would like to listen to more of his stuff, though, just so I can understand like the what's background. his deal yeah. specifically, because it's hard to um, just judge an artist by one album, especially especially if it's not their first or debut album. Um, you can't like really make an image of them just by that one I mean, project. Depends. Um, and I would uh, really like to hear more of him, and hopefully I will. Um, and that this won't be the only release for this year. Okay. Hopefully. I so. have... Before I get to the next one, mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you do your next. But first, I, I wanted to give some honorable mentions, you know? Sure. Because everyone is fucking sleeping. It's each January. There's no bands putting out material. I found some stuff, barely. Um, Haunt which is a traditional heavy metal band, which means they play metal the way it was played, like the way Iron Maiden used to mm -hmm, play it. Mm -hmm. uh, they put out an album last year, and the year before that, and maybe even a year before, so every year it's a new album. Uh, they put out an album, a uh, new one, uh, like 
a week ago or something. And it's it's haunt at their what what they do. It's it's I, I wouldn't call it great. It's a good album. I really love the, the whole revival of the, 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 the traditional scene. I hope it blows up. N not not too much, but it's a, it's a, yeah, at a good state mm -hmm. right now. But then there's those lost. I call them lost bands okay. in that whole scene. They're like power metal, but traditional power metal, which is just Iron Maiden singing about dragons. You know? okay. And then those bands are mixed in with these traditional bands. And I found a few of those and, you know, I put, put the album, you know, I'm gonna listen to this. It just came out like a day ago, <laughs> okay, I, let, let's see what, what this is about. The music starts, it's great, it's, it's, it's like some really good power metal. And then the dude starts singing about how they're brothers in metal and they're gonna and I'm like no goodbye mm. no like, like, my little pony no it's not <laughs> like, they're, they're brothers like it's it's elitist mentality in metal for non-elitists like uh, there, there's a band Man of War you may have heard I of think them. I have there, there's like they're a huge metal band very influential I'd say unfortunately, I know at this point it's unfortunate that they were as influential for those things. Like they, they played well, they, they were great live, but they had some, I'd say, questionable, you know, cringy lyrics and stuff. Like uh, it's just hype lyrics when you're when you're drunk, you know, oh, it's yeah. great. But but you're I'm not gonna sit and listen to it and be like, yeah, this is, this has any meaning at all. Oh, yeah. You know, brothers of metal unite or something like that. You know, it's, it's, yeah. And then there's like a whole wave of bands just doing that. Like, being a metalhead is, is not a personality, you know. So, I, there, were, there was those, a few of those bands. Mm -hmm. Then there was the, um, I, I talked about Haunt, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a death metal band, which is, you know, weird. So I usually don't mention those called Wormhole. Oh, I actually think I've heard of them. Uh, I've known the band since the, the, their beginning, like back in 2016. No, I, I, I'm not, not sure. Um, because I was following some of the members on I don't know, social media, or I followed some of the their bands, mm -hmm. the other bands. And then Wormhole was created. They put an album in 2017 or I'm not sure. I think it was 2017. It was pretty good. And then they came out this year with another album. It's called uh, The Weakest Among Us. It's <laughs> it's weird. It's, it's like technical death metal, but it's slam at the same time. And okay, if you can combine that, like technical and brutal are often combined, and it's either great or unlistenable. And they didn't do any of that. They went like, we're gonna play technical, but not too technical, and we're gonna play brutal, but not too brutal. So it's somewhere in the middle. But I think it's it's a good album. It has some some few, you know, those slam riffs to 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 fight someone to you know to to mosh. No, not mosh. To kill people. To it's that's my what I mean. So that that's my second artist. Everything I just said. I traditional metal and warhol. I have no idea what you just said. Yes. I've got so lost yes. when you mentioned technical and slam the first time because I've never heard. So I can't like I haven't even heard an example okay, of those. Slam, so slam, I can't imagine. Slam is the, the unlistenable kind to you. you know? Everything like, is unlistenable. No, I mean the, the, it's literally like it's it's the the, the sync noise and distorted guitars somewhere in the background and that 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 that's the whole thing i mean with a couple there's, there's no point in explaining it like that to me because i yeah i, I can't I'm imagine gonna, i'm gonna show you some stuff and yeah. you're gonna see what i meant okay and technical is imagine playing like beethoven's staccato of some symphony mm -hmm. three times faster on an electric guitar to a blast beat that that's technical that's not all It's, it's
it's not like video game music. It's it's it it's art. Okay. It's very hard to play. It's very complicated. It's very complex, and it's underappreciated. Thank you. We changed. Um, I changed my seating position so we had the break because my leg got numb. That's why we look a bit different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my third album. Okay. Another confusing one. Another. Another. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure how you're supposed to pronounce this artist's um, name. Another one. Uh, it's. 070070070, I'm not sure, Shake. Um, and the album is called Modus Vivendi. Well, um, that, that was easier. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> um, and well, the artist's real name is Danielle Balbuena. She is a year older than us. And uh, when I first started listening to her song, I was. Uh, so captivated by the instrumentals. I was quite surprised because I was not expecting it, especially when you look at like the cover, uh, cover album, cover of the album, album, album cover. Wow, <laughs> like in my album brain. Album art, cover <laughs> art, like there's 15 things to say. That. Um, and at first, when I heard the first like five seconds, I was like, oh, is this like some Bjork type of stuff? I was not prepared. What is but Bjork? then it moved on to like Janelle Monet uh, vibes. That's, that's, the, that's the, I know, I know that yeah, one. I know, you know that her. one. Yeah, yeah. Then it like changed to her vibes, and then uh, it was like a combination of those two. But then the girl not only sings, she also raps. So. Well, Jenna Monet does that as well, but she's like strictly hip hop or B pop. But this was has like the music that you would hear with Bjork, okay. like that kind mm. of ambiance music and very mystic and interesting. Yes, but the lyrics and the way she was singing it was a lot more R and B, hip hop, rap. Um, and she doesn't have like that. Um, usually, women in hip hop and rap have like either like the rasp. Uh, more low voice, but her voice has like no rasp at all. It's like very so it's like, smooth and it's soft. It's like Korean girls doing rap. Mm, I mean, really. they, they all have like really high voices. Yeah, well, but it's not high. It's not a high voice. Just very really smooth and mellow voice and steady voice. It doesn't have like the growls while she like raps and stuff like that, you know. And then I realized why this was like this. She was apparently in a project. So it was entitled like 070070, however it's okay. pronounced. Um, apparently, I'm not 100% sure, it's still ongoing. Uh, which is like just this huge collaboration of different hip hop R&B artists with different sounds and they kind of tried to merge together and create these new projects. Okay. And a couple of years ago, she was noticed actually by Kanye West and his label. And she's currently under one of his labels. Okay. Um, and she was also featured in his Ye album. Ye. Uh, two songs, Ghost Town and another one, but I can't remember. Well, the it name. wasn't Ghost Town. The... It said, uh, that's how I found the, the information. The uh, it's what it said on okay, Wikipedia okay, 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 and stuff. So I'm not okay. a. Yeah. I'm not, um, not a professional, yeah, sorry. I'm not a professional with Kanye's career, so I can't. Um, and also, she was just featured in many other. Uh, hip hop artists uh, tracks as well, which actually got her her let's say fame now. Okay. Um, but she's been doing music, I think, since she was like sixteen, intensely with this which whole project. Which is six whole years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, I think she joined the label two years ago. I would like to say, and okay. since then has released a couple albums on her own. Um, and they all, and that's like when it hit me, uh, why the sound was so familiar, it's so different because I could see like the Kanye vibe that he put in those albums specifically, um, where you have like the singing and like the, let's call it softer rapping, not that aggressive rapping with like okay. mellow tunes in the background and beats. Um, I'm honestly quite curious to see what she will do in the future because 
this album was a roller coaster, like every song is different, different message, um, uh, melodically different, and also uh, her flow changes throughout every song. And I'm glad to see that there's like an actual female rapper that has nice singing vocals and not just a good rhythm when, when yeah. um, rapping. Um, and what else would I like to say about her? Oh, she's queer, she's gay, which we love, we stand, we need more gay How is that relevant to the I don't music? know, I just, like, it's not, but okay. I just remembered. <laughs> um, I know she was like featured in one of the music magazines for Pride Month, and that's how I oh, found out. Oh, so, I get it. Um, and yeah, I'm just, yeah, that's it. Like, it's as you can see, it's mostly like very young artists and new artists for me as well. So, it's kind of hard to I mean, same, but, describe but, but, them but when for it's like, extreme music, yeah, it's hard to describe them when it's your first impression of them and first time hearing anything from them. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they, they will eventually develop a, yes, a sound yes, of their own, yes, yes, or um, be generic, which is also easily definable. So. Yeah, um, I'm just curious to see if she will continue to have that Kanye vibe in her songs, or if she will eventually like create a completely new sound for that record label. Does even Kanye still have the Kanye vibe? I don't listen. I asking don't listen asking the real questions here, you heard it for first here. I don't listen to Kanye. Well, at least not well, the recent things. Well, neither, neither do I. It's just that he, um, he's, he's a meme at this point. Kind of, yeah. I mean, he's, he's good, mm -hmm. but he's also a meme. Um, I also know that she did get signed to the label because of that project that I mentioned. And I'm not sure if any of the other artists, like where did they go? I, I really need to research on that project more. Okay. Uh, because I've never heard of it before. It could be like this underground hip hop type of thing, which I'm not Maybe that it's just into. A cult, like, so, who knows? Oh, uh, that. Kanye is cult, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Wouldn't be too weird. And. Oh. Uh, is that. That's the. <laughs> oh, okay. Honorable I, mentions. Oh, I didn't. Anything? I didn't. Um, Translate what modus vivendi means, though, so I don't know what it means. I'm very good at Latin, usually. But not now. <laughs> no, like sometimes with trust translation. I, I, I bet I know what it means, but just not, not, not. There, 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 never mind. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. That's okay. it. So we're moving on. I have like that single, but I really want to talk about it separately, not like okay. a filler or anything like that. So my next artist is Bjork. <laughs> Henrik Nordwager Bjork. What? Yes. Wait, the album name is... No, no, Wait, no. I'm no. so confused. It's his last name. He's Swedish. He's, he's a totally different person. Oh. <laughs> Henrik Bjork. Okay. And there's a Nordwager in the oh, middle. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's his actual middle name or thingy or something, but it is the name of his solo project, which is what I'm gonna talk about. Mm -hmm. So he, guess what he did? Put out an album. When? Like a week ago. Is it good? Yes, go listen to it. It's called Dead or something, but in, in, in Swedish. So it's D A A D. Yeah, it sounds. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's Norwegian. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, it's. it's <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna post a link somewhere. We're gonna have a picture yeah. of the album cover. Well, the, the picture is just a white background with the logo. Well, that's enough. <laughs> you, know. you know, so it's uh, guess the genre. Let's let's do a guess the genre with camo. Death black metal, metal, black metal, death metal, black metal, death metal. No. Do metal. No. It, 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 it's very, very, <laughs> very close to, to black metal, but it's not quite that black metal, you know. I have no idea. It's, um, you know, no. 
Uh, Most likely no. no. I, I need to formulate how do I explain what the man is doing. It's 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 cultist music basically, you know. Okay. It's it's ambient music for Satan worshiping. Is it like lingua? Yes, but but, but without the without the softer parts. Oh, okay. So somewhat yes. Wait, does he do like growling? Yeah, uh, screaming. Yes, okay, with okay. a lot of distortion, a lot of uh, industrial music elements in the background, a lot of noise, a lot of ambience, um, so it's not really metal, I mean, you, you, you could say, but it's not the, the traditional metal you'd expect, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's experimental, basically, it's a, an experimental extreme metal, I'd, I'd call it that, it's very <laughs> culty, you know, the, okay. the ambient music for, for cult people, that, that's how I see it. Isn't, and, okay, didn't you mention something in your yearly favorites that it was also that I imagine like people in robes? That was funeral doom metal. How is it different? Uh, because funeral doom is just doom metal made slower and heavier, you know? <coughs> well, you how can, different is the sound, I mean? Very different. Like you, you have uh, in doom metal especially you have the heavy heavy riffs you know they're they're slow but they're they're very you know, catchy mm -hmm. even sometimes you know like uh, Black Sabbath has catchy songs take that and then uh, drop the tuning to make it sound you know bigger heavier and play it slower so you get like somewhere near there you know put in a bit of death metal vibes, uh, atmosphere, not music, like atmosphere and production and vocals of course, but just just very slow down and that's funeral duo. Mm. On the other hand, what he's doing is very... <laughs> um, there's a lot of more effects, you know, mm -hmm. going on, uh, a lot of well, I do assume it is gonna have more it, it's, of that pagan yeah, it's, element, no, if he's from... Actually, yes. I was going to mention that later. There's a lot of that mm. in, in, in everything he's ever done. Like, oh, he's, yeah, been, so he's been in bands, in other projects, in duos, trios. I have no idea. I know some of them. And yeah, there's always been that. Like, the dude is... is a, yeah, so it's like a, a bit different person. atmosphere when you... No, it's not, not the atmosphere. I was going to say, pagan. it's... it's um, this is computer-generated noise, you know, like you you use machines to, to make the sounds, but he also uses instruments, of course, but he uses also a lot more um, distortion, mm -hmm. more effects, more, like do, uh, funeral doom is, is just straightforward, mm -hmm. you know, and he's experimental, and he's more, more uh, it's closer to black metal, or industrial black metal, or something in between, no, noise black metal, mm -hmm. that, that black metal in itself is noise, so it's a very experimental piece of work, it's very like, apocalyptic in its lyrics, the themes, and go join a cult, form a cult dedicated to this guy, it's, it's great, I love it. Thank you, Bjork, for doing this. What did you say his middle name is again? Nordvarger. That's the name of the project. I can't. Yes. It reminds me of something, but I can't. But? Yes. Most likely. We don't do that here. <laughs> yeah. My I'm... favorite forest man. <laughs> I think he also had a project called Varger. Just. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry if I'm destroying the pronunciation, actually I'm not, I don't care. It's the best I can do is this, so... True. Um, it's... I don't know. Let, just, just listen to it. It's, it's an amazing experience. I really, 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 really liked it. It's an amazing album. Piece of art, piece of... Didn't Ozzy Osbourne like release a single or an album? He's still alive. I think, yeah, I think I saw, or he's about to release this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, No, he's releasing a movie. 
I thought it was like an, also an album or a single or something. Well, we can check, but I know. I know. I was like, what? Like he's capable of like still making music, isn't he? Like I mean, let me make dying? music until he dies. So. Oh, well, true. But I don't. Well, Ozzy is like rotten inside, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how he's he, capable. No, he's been rotting inside since like seventies. So yeah, maybe he's just used to it at this I point. Know. I would like to see some more music from his daughter though. She used to make like... I have no music. idea. I, I only know Ozzy and, and Sharon. And I have not watched the, the what's the call? The reality. Keeping the... keeping up with Osborne. Oh, or I love that show. I actually watched whatever it. Whatever it was. I haven't watched it. For Ozzy, Ozzy, reason. Ozzy was like... I, I can't say I'm not a fan. Like he, he's, he's a great... Hmm. Icon. Well, he's not. Yeah, he's not a great icon. He isn't that great of a singer. I think Dio was much better. But you know, opinions happen. So I haven't really paid that much attention to it. It was always like, oh, he, he's falling out of relevancy. He's gonna mm. do something crazy again. Yeah. But lately, like the last couple of years. I mean, that Post Malone song. I don't know the song. But I know that a few years back, like he, he's kind of calmed down. I'm, I'm not, not like I'm following his private private life. Uh, when well, I don't remember what year it was, 2013 maybe when mm -hmm. Black Sabbath put out an album. That album was actually you know people liked it. Uh, it had some good singles, some good stuff. So maybe and yeah, we we have confirmed it. Yes. He is releasing an album soon, so... I'll actually like listen to it because I'm just curious, like what is he doing? Like what, what is this gonna be? Like what's what's the point? I mean, have you heard the last Sabbath album? I mean, I know like the Sabbath yeah, sound and vibe and stuff, but I'm wondering like what he's gonna do now when I he's mean, like very old and almost dead. The, the, guitarist, <laughs> the guitarist still got it, so he, he even... Uh, last year, uh, I think it was... Candlemas, the band, put out an album, and uh, there was a single, uh, Astrolus, with uh, to Tommy from Sabbath, mm -hmm. and I mean, he can, he can still play, so... Honestly, for someone who really doesn't listen to metal music, I really followed a lot of like their personal lives. Like I was obsessed with that reality show of Ozzy. So and you, don't, also, you don't listen to the music, but you like I'm, the drama. I'm here for the drama. Oh, I also God. watched like the Gene Simmons one, uh, the Kiss guy. Yeah, I know who Gene and, Simmons is. And because I was so confused with like his, oh. what, what is he married? Is he not married? I think he's like not married, but has kids with the woman or something. I don't. I still don't get it. I was quite young when I was following it. <laughs> Um, and that's how you ended up like this. <laughs> and I can't remember which other ones I watched, but I watched a lot. Okay, we need we need a like a new. But new they're one. hilarious to watch, especially the Osborne ones. We like need, their a, we need a, like a, 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 like the uh, Big Brother. With the, all of the. No, no, with like Slipknot. And they just slip not like there's nine, ten of them. How many of them? Yeah, <laughs> and they follow each other. Yeah, the, no, like Big Brother. Oh, no, okay, just, okay, just them, okay. just, uh, just nine, Everyone. nine of them, you know, <laughs> and that that's full house, mm. just one band, or put two bands that hate each other in a, you know, cage match in, in in a house, you know, in a, in a Big Brother type of a show. I don't, but I've seen recently on some like British channel um, that Ozzy and his wife Sharon, like. I don't know like what's the point of doing that, but they I guess bring other people to watch the show you're watching like at the same time, so they get a cut to see their reaction what? as well. Like if I was watching like I don't know like a baking show, okay. like a baking competition, and then in the middle of it all, it just switches to Ozzy and Sharon sitting and watching it as well and commenting on what's happening, but they're like not part of the show; they're just like watching it like you are. <laughs> I don't I mean, know why how, they do it. How much of an icon do you have to be <laughs> to, to, to just watch something and people want want your reaction? Yeah, I guess that's like I currently... Mean, well, I mean, considering that like reaction channels and videos are quite popular, yeah, now, I, I can see why they're you go, You go Aussie. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Yeah, there's without more. Without straying away, it is my single. last 
single, which is also like a little teaser for the full album that's gonna be out this year sometime. I don't think I've seen like the specific release date. Mm -hmm. Have you heard it? of Grey Days? A Grey Days, D A Z E. D A Z E. Yes. No, and uh, is it an indie or an alternative? It's a rock. Yeah. Ish. Rock. It's yeah, an rock. alternative indie listen, band, No, isn't listen. It? It's Chester Bennington's former band before he formed Linkin Park and everything. Oh. Well, what the fuck are they doing then? They are releasing all of the songs they recorded with him before he passed okay. away, specifically when he was like 17. So very young. And okay. uh, they released a single called What's in the Eye with his voice and I, I saw it this morning and I was crying I do because Chester <laughs> I mean I cried when he died and everything and ah, uh, okay. it was just an emotional morning for me because I mean, uh, let's be, let, not, not to get anything wrong I'm sad that he died yeah I course. think he was actually a great vocalist yeah. but Linkin Park as a band yeah could have been better. It and belongs in the trash. The, the, uh, like in the beginning. The newer things. Let's no, call. like in the beginning, it was it was okay. You know, it wasn't like wow or something. It was like a better version of Limp Biscuit, which is great actually. They, they were heavier and better than Limp Biscuit. I claim that. Um, but like recently, they they turned into Imagine Dragons. True, you know. true. But I haven't really listened to any of. I don't really follow I the did. Miller I, I projects, to it. but I did listen to Linkin Park a lot. Yeah. Um, and mm. I was so glad to hear that they will be releasing a full album with all of the songs they recorded together, okay. where Chester is 17 years old and singing. And um, it was just quite a nostalgic experience for me this morning to like hear his voice, and I was like so surprised. I mean, you can definitely hear that he was young when yeah. he's singing it but it's still like that iconic screaming uh oh and yeah, yeah i mean singing yeah uh why, why is it becoming trend trendy again like not not related to chester i already said i think he's a great vocalist was mm -hmm. and he he does have his legacy like definitely like, you know the song uh, given up mm -hmm. uh, that, who who else can do that true yeah and but but like nowadays an artist dies, and then yeah. for two years they keep releasing yeah, new material. Like, for fuck's sake! Keep coming. Okay, but, I get it. With, um, with Chester, they're gonna release that. And well, yeah, that's true. It. I was like really surprised, honestly, because I thought like perhaps Linkin Park is gonna do it. Yeah. Because I thought like maybe they recorded a couple of songs. Well, that would be very, very um, disrespectful. True. Honestly, um, they might do it like sometimes in the future, yeah. which would be a bit more understanding. Um. But like but to these, hear these, like these, from his like first yeah. band, like they actually like, kept everything and they're ready to release it to the public. It was amazing. Um, I'm not sure how many tracks there's gonna be on the full album. If it's gonna be like I don't know how many albums they even recorded. I'm not sure. So I don't know if it's like, gonna be just one album of all the songs they ever recorded together, or if it's gonna be like an album by album by album. No, like they're gonna no, release no. different. I'm not sure if, that, if there's that much material. Yeah, so but uh, yeah, like unlike some artists, who, like uh, how, how do you, how do you get that much material? Are they just in the studio, like just talking all day, so you can record every word in their days yeah, and then I just mean, make tracks? I like Lil Peep put out almost more albums after his death than before. Listen, like also like X, I, I still see X, like X, songs with X. I think X actually put more put out more music after his death yeah. than before. Um, not 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 hundred percent really sure. Weird. But... I don't know. It almost seems to me like they die and die. Maybe they didn't even die. Like who? Oh yeah, time? it's a conspiracy. Um, wow, we're getting like... banned. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is just an idea, my imagination okay. working. Like maybe it is like a marketing trick where they just tell them like go oh, retire no, I, I think... or something. No. Like just delete yourself from the public eye, we'll say you died, and then you can release music, because usually you get more famous after you die. Yeah, but these people are, I mean, the rappers and everything, you know, there, there's some great stuff in there. 
when we talked, like I think with Anna, the episode, like they do drugs, and they do a lot of them, and they are very reckless. Like they, they, they are the new rock stars, you know, and they act like it, and then they fucking die at the age of 22, 23. Like, like what the fuck did you do with your life? You grew up, you started making music, and then you died. Like they didn't even get that famous, you know. Right? Oh, the food oh, is food here. Oh, food is here. The food is here. <laughs> okay, and and they just died. Like, mm. I, I mean, I get it. In Black Metal, Dead killed himself, and then Varg oh, killed Euronymous, and you know all that. That was also problematic. Euronymous deserved to die. I'm saying it openly here. I don't care. Let's not be homicidal at the moment, <laughs> you know. Um, but the the, the the whole idea behind someone dying and then you go, hey, we can make money out of this. Like, sure, if the money is gonna go to their family. Or sure, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. there was a thing when uh, Mitch Locker died. Mm -hmm. When they had like the big, uh, they, uh, big uh, concert. It was uh, the vocalist of Suicide Silence, and they had a huge concert. Mm -hmm. And for every song, there was a different vocalist yeah, 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 to do that. the song. That's one of the best concerts yeah. recorded like of the, of the decade. I, I, it was amazing. Everything they, all the money went to his daughter. She was like I think six or seven when he died. Is she like around our age? No, she's no, younger. No, she's younger. She's younger. Um, I think she was six or seven when he died. I'm, I'm really not sure. I didn't follow his personal life. I, I did really like the band, mm. and that concert death kind of thing. That was that was great. You know, the band moved on eventually. You know, got a new vocalist. Turned to absolute shit. No one listens to them anymore. But that's irrelevant. They didn't exploit his death. That's what matters, mm. and that's why I, I yeah. still respect them. You know, yeah. they could have gone and like do the re-release the demos from back in the uh, day. Like the documentary. Day the uh, there was the, a documentary. Really? Yeah, but it was him? a documentary. Oh yeah, sorry, I meant like. Uh, he wasn't played. I mean, there were clips of him. No, I mean uh, like what they're doing with like Freddie Mercury. No, that's a biopic. Oh, biopic. That's a biopic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was just a documentary. It was released a year, uh, exactly a year after his death, oh, as an anniversary. We should watch it. It's very, sure. very emotional. Yeah, I'm gonna cry. Uh, it was very. Yeah, I think I cried the first time I saw it. I was young. I remember and when he died. Even though yeah. I wasn't that in the community, because like Tumblr loved him. Because it, that was like the era where Tumblr was yeah, filled him, with that him, him type and, of... and all these sites from Bringing yeah, Horizon like were the, the faces. All, yeah, all over it. And then I saw when he died. And I was actually I really mean, he was, he was like genuinely a, nice a great person, guy. Yeah. yeah, and he, he, he looked fucking scary. Like all tattoos really covered and sounded scary. Not really. And he was very tall, you know, like... Um, for me, he looked like just a typical dad with tattoos and that. No, like, he, he, had, like, he was like, he, he, had, like he had the, the, the presence, you know, like, if he looked at you, you thought he was oh. angry, you, you'd get scared, you know. It was uh, the presence, but he was actually a really chill and really nice guy, and yeah, he had an accident. And, exactly. Yeah. Wait, what? How old was he? He wasn't really old, I, I don't think he was even like, 30. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know. Is he? I'm gonna Google, Google it. Google it. Um, yeah, it was quite a tragic death. I really remember people, like all media outlets, blew up about it. Um, yeah. But I'm glad that like his legacy remained in a positive light, and it wasn't his death wasn't commercialized basically. Yeah. Um, does it say? From '84. So that's. 28. He was, now. he was, he was, no, he was he 28 died. when he died. Ugh, almost. Yeah. And, um, um... I think this is a good note to wrap it up before we get yeah. too depressed and start crying in front don't, of the Don't camera. die, people. Go, go, go. Uh, stay safe. Start a cult or something. <laughs> um, listen listen to, 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 to... I'm gonna go eat. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat. Wait, say goodbye. I'm gonna, goodbye. I'm gonna go eat. Uh, I'm hungry. Leave us your suggestions and comments and everything in the, the, the down below. Please, please rem remember to like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and the subscribe. Video. We're off to eat. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>